On tonight's show, we meet up with one of Montreal's pioneer podcasters who's also a mortgage specialist and, of all things, a political enthusiast. Are we going to meet up with a future mayor of a borough, a future MA? Who knows? But one thing we do know, we got a great show lined up for you tonight right here on Rob's Inner Circle. Don't go anywhere. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Gentlemen, and welcome to Rob's Inner Circle broadcasting live on my personal Facebook page on the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel and on the Rob's Inner Circle Twitch account. I want to give a huge shout out to my good friend and producer of Rob's Inner Circle, Miss Jenny Duhame. And I also want to give a shout out as well to our podcast techie here on the show, Patty Saragosa. We would like to give an honorable mention to one of our past guests who was on our show on episode 52. And you can watch uh, this episode here on the Bobby Short Shorts. You put on the uh, Rob's Inner Circle um, playlist. That's episode 52. And we're talking about a Swad Bushnak who has been selected for the Marché du Film Festival de Cannes Spot Composer Program as one of four composers from around the world. Congratulations, Swad. And on behalf of myself, Jenny, and Patty, we wish you the very best of luck. A reminder that the Daily Struggles sitcom is up and running on the Rise Up TV channel on the Roku streaming service. And you can download the Roku uh, app. You can get that onto your uh, smart devices, or you can get the stick the, on uh, Amazon, uh, the Roku streaming stick, you get that on Amazon for as little as $30. And you could watch our amazing show. We also want to remind you that we have our merch store that is up and running as well. And this is thanks to our collaborative effort with our good friend and none other than Vinny the Hat, also known as Vincent Gargano. And you can go on to 514brandingco.com and you can choose all of the beautiful selectable items we have. And we have a lot of great stuff over there. So you do want to visit 514brandingco.com. A reminder that we invite you to subscribe to the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. You can go on and uh, click on to all of our playlists over there and enjoy our productions. There's some really good stuff on there. You want to give us some likes, some nice comments. You want to share, subscribe to Bobby Short Shorts. And, of course, you want to hit that notification bell because you will be the first one to know every time something new comes out. Well, folks, it's that time once again. It is time for our weekly ritual. It is time to sit back. You want to take in that deep breath. <sighs> Exhale the bad air. Sit back, relax. Let us carry the load. Kick up your feet on the edge of the table and enjoy an absolutely great show because we have an absolutely great guest. This is a man who needs less and less of an introduction because he's made his mark uh, in Montreal over here. He's also a worldwide figure because he's got a very successful show and he's also co-hosting another show. But he's a great all-round guy. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Montreal's own, Montreal's sensation, Montreal's pioneer broadcaster slash podcaster, None other than Mr. Luigi Costanza. <laughs> I gotta get I gotta give the Ange clap. I gotta give the Ange clap. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> welcome to Rob's in the circle. So happy to have you here. Rob, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. As you know, I took a long break this summer and I feel like, oh my god, I'm like, what do I do? What's this, what's this mic in front of me for? I feel lost, but uh, it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back real quick. Hey, you know what? You've lost none of it. I mean, I don't know how long you've been off there, but it's as if it was like only yesterday. 
Yeah, uh, it's uh, I decided, uh, you know, as I was telling you off air, just decided to take the summer off because I got young kids and uh, pretty busy with with them and the family. So uh, I try to dedicate my time to them. But first of all, not not two things here. Yes. I felt like when you were doing the introduction, I felt like I was in a yoga class <laughs> and I, I was starting to do it was helping me. I was already meditating. I was breathing out and I, I just I felt this calm come <laughs> over me. I'm like, but I have to talk, so I can't relax during the, <laughs> during the podcast. <laughs> and, and second, how and, the hell do I live up to that introduction? First of all, you're, <laughs> you're far too flattering. That oh, my one. God. And, and how do I live up to that now? I, I have no idea. I don't know what to do now. I'll tell you how you can start living up to it. You can take this thing over here. You can raise it. I got some Look rosé in here tonight. All right. All right. So this, in case you're wondering, guys, this is the Wayne Gretzky. Because uh, I just went to Ontario for vacation no and got this at the LCBO, not available at the SAQ. The Wayne Gretzky um, uh, uh, Baco Noir. Oh my God, it sounds it's so delicious. Fantastic. Really? Cheers. Cheers yes, to you, good. bud. Cheers. Thank hey, you. Uh, to your success. And mm. to yours, because, um, you know, b before we get into me, Rob, honestly, I, I just want to say I, I commend you for how can I say this reinventing your, your entire life, following your passion for film, uh, then throwing yourself into podcasting, uh, and just, and just not, and we've had so many conversations, right. Since, <laughs> since we met and thankfully for this beautiful podcasting, I met great guys like you. And I just want to commend you honestly for just not giving a shit. Can I, can I swear by the way? Well, uh, a little bit uh, dull. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, so for ju for just for not giving a shit what people think, and doing what you want. And I, I'm telling you, there is nothing more liberating than that. There is nothing more free than that. Because had I listened to everyone, the naysayers, I would have stopped a long time ago. So honestly, I really want to commend you for that. Um, I really do. I really well, do. Uh, and and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank you so much. Those are kind words, and I'm, I'm very, very flattered and touched with what you said. But don't forget, you're one of the pioneers, and that means that you are one of my idols. Oh, my God. So the flowers keep going back and forth over the here. How about getting sponsored by a flower shop? Huh? Yeah, cool. Can we get? I, actually, my sister's in the flower business, so I could talk to her. <laughs> you know, we can talk after the show. All right. Sounds but during good. the show, if someone gets a crazy idea with flowers and all, why not? But but you know what, Rob? The reason why I do it is because I've always thought a lot of guys that have asked me for their opinion is it's th this game, you have to stay in it. And look, you're at episode, this is 52, 53? Actually, no, this is like, we're into the 60s right now. Okay, so so 60s, okay? I only mentioned 50 because I meant I, I heard it before, but I mean... It's 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 a matter of sticking to it, and um, you've been at it, and you're consistent. This that's sticking to it and consistency is the most important things. Um, I say, and when people ask me in podcasting, and here I am, you know, taking a break this summer, but that's 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 another reason. It's not like I make money for podcasting, so I, I need to take care of my young family. Obviously, though, they're there, they are the priority after all, and I'm only yeah. doing this. I'm only doing this because of uh, you're very welcome, Jenny. By the way. <laughs> uh, and I'm only doing this because I love it. And you're probably going to ask me how I started doing this. And uh, um, yes, that's the next question. But before we get to that, just yes, me, yes. Uh, uh, one little chance just to say something very quickly because the show is all yours. The platform is yep, yours. Absolutely. If this show is as great as it is, it's because I have two wonderful ladies working with me, such as Jenny Duhaim and Patty Saragosa, who are doing an exceptional job making the show what it is. So now that we got that off my chest, yep. let's get on with the with the stick over here. So tell us all about how it is that you got interested in podcasting, and you know, tell us from you start from the beginning. You were three years old watching Star Trek, <laughs> Mission Impossible. How did you get to where you are today? Well, uh, growing up in <laughs> in in a Sicilian household, uh, if you want, with four sisters, by the way. <laughs> if you want <laughs> all older than you, if you wanted to be heard, uh, you had no choice but to be loud. Uh, so I've always been loud. Uh, I've always been heavily opinionated uh, from a very young age. And um, I've always looked, been interested as, as I got older 
got interested in world affairs and current affairs and and politics. And then um, I'd say about five, six years ago, um, I came up with an idea when this podcasting, you know, when I started listening to podcasts and there was Facebook Live had just come out, um, I said, you know what, I, I feel like doing something. So I came up with an idea at the time, which which was which was the, my first show, uh, uh, agree to this, not agree to disagree. Nobody is safe here. Podcast with uh, Montreal uh, comedian legend Tony Richo. Uh, Tony and I go go way back. We we went to high school together, and okay. I approached him and I said, I have an idea for a show, and I said, uh, you know, we'll we'll pick current event stories, and I'll give my serious spin on it how I look at it and politically and social economic issues or whatever it may be. And obviously you're going to put your, your spin and comedy on it. And, uh, we had a great ride. We, 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 um, we, we did 20 or almost 30 shows, I believe, but unfortunately I stopped it for the right reasons. And I regret stopping it because I, I back then on my employer, um, I was scared because it was a little bit edgy, obviously, what we were discussing. And uh, I said, uh, I'm going to have a hard time explaining my wife that I lost my job because of my oh. podcasting, right? Okay. Um, you know, because now, you know, you know, our employers are, right? Rob, they'll look at everything on online. Everything, everything. And everything. all it takes is for one complaint, one client to see it, and then I'm done, right? So I stopped it and um, uh, I had a blast doing it. It was fantastic. And I, and I got the taste of it then because I knew nothing, right? what what which there was no stream yard back then so you know what software do we use what microphone do i buy what stand do i buy and these these are all from my stand and my my mics are all from from back then um and i learned that just you know trial and error and we had such a freaking blast we had such a blast and tony had such a great following and we developed really something nice i mean we were averaging uh I'd say our peak was about five, six thousand views. Oh my god! Um, yeah, yeah, five, six thousand views overall. Not, not live, obviously. Um, but we were averaging about, I believe, twenty-five to three thousand views per episode. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, and that's why I look back. But you listen, you can't have regrets in life, and and I, 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 not that I have a regret. I just, I'm upset that I had to stop it. But so then, a um, couple of years back, I said. Um, Right at the beginning of COVID, I'm like, I miss doing this. I have a voice. I feel the need to talk. I love talking to people. And my idol is Joe Rogan. So um, oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I said, uh, let me do a show. And everything that interests me, that's why I call it Agree to Disagree with anybody of my guests. And we could talk about anything and everything from current events to social issues to political issues, which is my forte. Okay. Uh, and... I've learned so much from my guests. I've met so many amazing people, Claudio, uh, Angelo, yourself, uh, Jofo podcast. Anyway, just so many fantastic people that have been on my guests or not people that have been on my guests that I could not even believe they said yes to me, you know, wow. local legends like Joey Elias, Dan okay. Laxer, uh, Fred Rubino comedian from Florida. We, we discussed that as well. I just couldn't believe the kindness of people really. Um, and I just want to learn from, from people and, and learn from people. And hopefully whoever's watching are entertained and could learn whatever subject we were, we're discussing. So, um, that's been my, in a nutshell, my, my podcasting career, if you want. And, um, I've loved it. I've loved it since the first day that you put a microphone in front of me. And, and it's funny, you know, whenever I spoke about this, but I guess, because I used to also do um, emceeing for weddings. Oh. So I guess that was pre-podcasting, right? So I always had that thing of entertaining and, and talking to people. Yeah, I, uh, I did that. I had a uh, DJ company too. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, all of this podcasting that we've been doing and all that, and I'm speaking for myself. I remember I'm, I'm uh, a retired bus driver and I'm doing some bus driving right now for a smaller company mm -hmm. and it's it has served me so well I used to have stage fright every time i have to get get up and do an announcement for the 40 50 passengers having the bus right now i just get up and it's like it just flows absolutely and, and i also was asked to mc um 
what is it, two, three, maybe four UBNOW events. It's a new service. Mm -hmm. You can check it out at ubnow.com. And for anyone out there who wants to book a show, uh, it's a streaming service. It goes live. Uh, it's it's unique. It's very nice. It's very well. It's high quality. Uh, I think right now we're up to 4K. And I the confidence that it has given me, not only as a, you know, a, a podcast, but in my everyday life, in everything I do, yep. Uh, whether it's I'm seeing like yourself uh, and making announcements, I've gained so much confidence from this. Absolutely. So, yeah, and we're doing this live, and I'm going to tell you something. Uh, hats off to you, by the way. Hats <laughs> off to all, all the podcasters out there. You cheers. know why? Because we're doing this live, and I'll, and I'll elaborate on that. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to agree with you on that because I don't. I, I honestly, I, I prefer doing live. And I don't want to edit. I don't. But, but you know what's what's uh, the thing about going live is that there's no tomorrow. It's like doing theater. If you can compare what we're doing, it's like theater versus a movie. A movie, it's cut. You can do 30, 40 takes. Yeah. There, you're gonna get it right eventually. But this yeah. is live. You mess up. It's there. It's on, on the moment. Yep. Yeah. Spur yeah. the moment type of thing. I love it. I love the I love the spur of the moment. I love you mess up, you mess up. And uh, when when I started my second podcast, and I'm sure we'll get to talk about it. Yeah, we're gonna with, get to that. Yeah, with the th three men in a podcast. You know, when we had our initial discussions, it was like, sh should we pre-record? And I said, absolutely not. I'm not pre-recording. I'm telling you right now, because for me, the whole thing, first of all, is like you said, the spontaneity. I don't care. Make a mistake. One of us makes a mistake. I don't care. And also, people watching live. Like I see in 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 the comments here, Roel, uh, Jenny, uh, you know, um, and, and so so for me, those are the questions, the interactions that I want, and you can't have that on a on a recorded thing. So I said, yeah. absolutely not. I'm not doing. If you want to do that, go ahead without me. I'm not doing it. It has to be live. <laughs> well, we have people tuning in tonight. Raul's from California. Yep. We got Ryu Cat who's tuned in from Japan. Yes. Michael Anchors, I saw him uh, show up, and he's from England. Yes. So we yes. have a worldwide audience over here. Worldwide. And what's fun is that these uh, followers, they from one podcast to another, they're great supporters. By the way, to all of you guys out there, Ryu Cat, Raul, Michael Anchors, uh, Jessica Sorrell, to name a few, to all you people who are supporting us, a huge thank you on behalf of myself and also from you know all of the other podcasters and Reno Verico's just tuned in and he's got a podcast going as well. Reno, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, our love to you, support to, to everybody doing the podcasting out there because that's the question I'm getting into now. Yeah. Do you find here, uh, after that, I would like to get into uh, your podcast, uh, sure. Agree to Disagree, and the other one, uh, Three Men sure. in the Podcast. Do you feel that here in the Montreal region that we are – supportive enough towards one another or is there a lot of work to be done or do you find that there's this i don't know this feeling of competition do you find that we could do a lot more like to improve to encourage each other well first of all i want to say hi to reno uh reno is a, a great friend of mine and um he by the way guys following me he's with the podcast station and they've got a great uh, variety of shows um uh, to answer your question rob um we have come a long way, uh, but from when I started, honestly, uh, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, we had this discussion off air, and it's always for whatever got you know. It's gotten to me, honestly. Uh, it, it just I don't I don't get this. Um, I believe that we grow stronger as a unit. When I say as a unit, Montreal and Quebec podcasters, if we work together and cross reference and help each other. And, and promote each other's shows just as we do uh, along with uh, the Dirty Four and Jofo and, and um, the Ange TV show and so on and so forth. There's so many fantastic shows out there and, and podcasts. And for the people, what, what gets to me, honestly, Rob, is when somebody is on your show and they can't even be bothered to do any type of publicity or marketing, just a simple, you know, just like I did. I went on my personal page and I'm like, guys, tonight I'm going to be on Rob's uh, inner circle. Come join me. You know, you don't have to, but at least I'm telling my my viewers, whatever they are, five, six, a thousand viewers, 
hey, come on, come on, uh, on Rob's. I'm going to be there. I haven't you haven't seen me in a couple of months? Come and see Rob's a great guy. And I find that um, there's a few people that that there there is that element of jealousy, unfortunately. But it's not like you're going to lose any of your viewership if you help promote another podcast. That doesn't make sense, Rob. It doesn't make sense to me. That's what upsets me the most because I see it as guys as Fred Rubino, Luciciniano Raggiato from Ontario, uh, um, Ted Bird, um, Joey Elias. These guys took the time to to advertise and just say, guys, I'm going to be on the show. They didn't have to. These people are made. But they 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 went that step and just to do that, just to help you. And I find that yeah, there's a lot of work to do in, in the uh, Montreal uh, scene. You're talking about people over here when we're mentioning Joey Elias, there's a Ted Bird, Freddie Rubino, these people, and all, and uh, we also had Kim Rossi and yep. uh, and uh, Ted Bird on our show, and that was wow, one great show. It was a lot of fun. And you can see these people here, they, they've been around, right? Oh, great yeah. supporters, absolutely adorable, lovable. I mean, I was totally honored not only have uh, Ted and Kim on the show. We also had Heather Backman on, to, to name yeah. a few. We had Robert Pichet, the pilot, the, that amazing feat. Both engines gave up on him. Just to yep. name a few, we also had John Mark Pisapia from The Box, the lead singer. Yep. Uh, it, you know, it's just such an honor to have these people here on our show. And, and we you know, they're celebrities. And they can easily say no, but they just say, you know, they're like, yeah, sure, we're going to come on and support you. That is such an act of honor, and I commend these people. My hat's off to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and since honestly, because I think it it, it it goes, it has to, I have to, since we're talking about it, I'm going to say the, the people that do, you know, there's, there's the guys from Just As Dad's podcast, guys. These are fantastic, honestly. Um, there's, you know, Dirty Four with Joey Laflamme, Claudio Capri. Um, there's been just so many. Um, you know, Massimo Canasharo, another Montreal local Montreal actor now living in Florida. He came on my show. The guys from Jofo, uh, Paulo Duca. I don't know if you've had him yet from Ontario as well, a comedian actor. He's fantastic. Um, authors I've had authors, Michael Occhianeri, uh, just you know, uh, George Tanzitos from Just As Dads. Just, I mean, there's so many great guys, Nick Drosos, the snob cast. The Snob Podcast. These guys are fantastic, by the way. Local Montreal guys as well. Um, I, I'm doing a shout out because I think these guys these guys deserve it, honestly. Um, and I'm just looking through all my guests, you know. And and of course, for me, my my treasure, my first guest on Agree to Disagree show is Eric Johnston. He's a local, uh, he's a comedian from Hamilton, Ontario, and I love Eric. And he's just exploding now. So. Um, I'm so happy, and and at least I could say I knew Eric when he was uh, <laughs> less known. But now, now he's. I always joke with him. I said, you know, when you become famous, make sure you remember who, who had joined the show first. <laughs> and, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was on Esther's on the Esther's Breeze podcast. And Esther Brzezinski, I want to give a huge shout out to mm -hmm. her, good friend of mine, and she's my co-host yep. on Noon Hour Out of the Box. We have our Wednesday Noon Hour show. Such a pleasure working with such a talented lady. So a shout out to Esther Brzezinski. Yep. Um, and that uh, Aaron Johnson was on Esther's show, Esther's Breeze. Yeah. Yeah. And hey. such a great guy down there. I love him. Here. I love him. I love him. I absolutely adore him. And I wish him nothing but success. And I know he's I don't need to because I know he's gonna explode. So he's gonna be the next next uh, Sebastian Maniscalco, I hope. Oh my At god, least that, yeah. At least I could see, hey, I know him. I know Eric Johnston. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, talk to us about uh, Agree to Disagree, the whole podcast, the whole concept behind it, how it came to be, and uh, how long has it been running. Sell your show. This is the platform. Go ahead. Give us your shtick. Yeah, so uh, first show was May uh, May 2020. So it's... it's uh, uh, 30, how many episodes have I done? 37. Um, and I honestly, um, not copied, but, but used as a guide. My hero is, uh, of course, uh, as everyone knows is, uh, Joe Rogan. And I always said, I want to be the Canadian Joe Rogan. Um, so I, I kind of, um, just stuck to the, you know, current events and, and politics. And so I choose, uh, topics to discuss, with guests and then there's certain shows that i've done 
where I've only spoken to certain people about what, you know, for if I'm just speaking about an author, we're talking about writing a book. I've had uh, a liberal MA uh, and a good friend of mine, Filomena Rotarotti, with the liberal Quebec uh, Liberal uh, Party. Uh, she was on my show, and obviously, we spoke about politics the whole. So I, I do a little bit of both, and um, that's how I wanted to to uh, structure my show. And, you know, when I do come back, I think in September, I want to try to have a lot more variety in terms of different guests, psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, social workers, discussions around education. Um, so really try to, to broaden my horizons because you know what? I'm 46, Robert, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me. You never stop learning. And yeah. I'm telling you what I've learned listening to certain uh, podcasts like Joe Rogan and uh, yes, Reno, of course I will do one on autism for sure. Um, what I've learned from, from listening to, to podcasts like planet money, uh, to, to, uh, Joe Rogan amongst others. I mean, I've learned so much from the, just because of the, the variety of guests that they've had, it's just been incredible. So I just want to be that and maybe put a little bit of a Canadian flair in there. And, um, We'll see where it takes me, Robert. You know, if it doesn't take me anywhere, I don't care. It's been a hell of a ride. I love it. I feel I have a uh, God gave me this 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 voice, and uh, that's what I'm doing. So, if it doesn't lead me to having my own deal or whatever, or podcast or 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 advertisers or marketers, I don't care. And that's what I think is um, is okay with me because. I do what I want and I do what I love. So, but you know what? Uh, nothing is lost because, uh, like I told you, my experience, the conference I built, I can now, like, you know, you could become a public speaker. You could probably become a stand up comedian. I mean, this is such a good training. It's a great school. And like I said before, and you know very well, it is live. And, you know, there's no tomorrow. I mean, after this, you can go into theater, there's, you know, public <laughs> speaking. A stand-up comedian. Is that something you're looking at? Um, I've listened, public speaking in in essence, I've did it because of my jobs that I've I've done that I was um I've always been in, in banking and so I was in, in business what they call business development manager. So it would entail doing a large presentations to large groups, and let me tell you, uh it was nerve-wracking. And when I started in that, it wasn't even in my, you know, obviously in my native lung of English. So it's, it's like I, I was thrown into the fire. But you know what? That, that helped me with my confidence so much. So when I decided to do podcasting, uh, it was nothing for me. It was so easy. So now I'm, I'm looking at other avenues. I'm like, how can I challenge myself? So I've, I've been even thinking about starting a French podcast. Oh. And and inter just basically do agree to disagree, but interview French speaking guests. So you so that's me to it. I was about to ask you that. <laughs> I, I've I've uh, well, yeah. Sorry about that, but uh, yeah, it's I've okay, given no it problem. serious thought, uh, Rob. Um, mm -hmm. I've given it serious thought because you know um, whether you like to, you know obviously we're missing out on a huge chunk of uh, viewership and and listenership in the Quebec market, and it's 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 and they're starving for it. And I think they do appreciate, even if it is not francophones, and I do think they do appreciate it um, because, you know, look at the success of Pantelis in one of his podcasts is in French, and and they love it. They love it, and I, I do appreciate They I think they do appreciate the, the, the francophone community does um, does appreciate when you do that, that effort. And I've spoken to some people, and I've asked them, and I said, you know, do you want to be on my show, and do you feel comfortable enough in English? And they said, no, I don't feel comfortable. I said, but if you would ever do it in French, I would be on your show. So that is something seriously that I'm considering, but that's just, that's playing in my head. It's, I know I could pull it off, but it's it's just like in my head, ah, it's, it's nerve wracking. Luigi, look at the bottom of the screen. I love this woman. <laughs> She's got the greatest ideas. Did you just read what I read? Yeah. There you go, Rob. You should hook up with Ouija on the French side. Could be a great mix. <laughs> hey, it's just, you know what? It's just thrown out there. It's just, you know, just. Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah. Who knows? So that's a great idea, Jen. I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I have I have given it serious uh, thought. And um, I, I will give it more serious thought when I do come back. And uh, 
we'll take it from there. We'll see how much time I have. Um, we'll, we'll see. What, we'll, we'll cross that path when we get there. And then there was the second podcast to come along. <laughs> yeah. Three men and a podcast. Tell us Three. all about that because I'm intrigued. I want to know all about this because <laughs> you're hooked up with two stellar podcasters and the likes of Claudio Silvio Capri, a local comedian from Montreal, and also the guy who got me, give me that little push, Mr. Ange Perella. So you two premium podcasters, actually three premium podcasters that you're hooked up with. There's two of them, I knew that makes three. So tell us how it is that this show came all about and what it's all about. Yeah, uh, God, these guys are, <laughs> first of all, shout out to Ange. And uh, let's do the Ange clap again. <laughs> uh, shout out to to my co-host Ange and uh, and Claudio and uh, three men in a podcast. It took us a while to come up with that name. We should have called three men and a baby, but that was already taken. <laughs> that's what it, that, that's what the whole idea came from, right? Yeah, well, almost, yeah, point. yeah. Three men in a podcast. So I said, let's just take out the baby and put podcast. So we, we threw go. around a couple of names. Um, but yeah, um, I had had. Um, First of all, you can't like you said. Uh, they've been on your show as well on on um, on your on your on your TV show. Um, yes, uh, daily struggles. The daily struggles. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I was just searching for the word. The and sitcom. <laughs> yeah, the sitcom. And uh, I met these guys, and we've hit it off. And Claudio uh, and Ange are just great guys. And we were just talking. They were both on my show, and I was on Dirty Four. And we were talking. They said, "Guys, wouldn't it be great to uh, have our own show." And I'm like, okay, what could we do it about? So collectively, I don't know how we came up with this. We were brainstorming and we came up with, with um, men's, everything involving men's health, uh, men's uh, issues, uh, because we feel that um, today it's, it, it, I think it's underserved. There's, there's, there's not many places where men could be totally honest with each other. Uh, there's that stigma attached to men having to be macho and not talking about mental health issues or any other issues for that matter. So we said, let's do something concentrated on that. And what I loved about it is how we look at these issues. Well, two things is that we've decided to be brutally honest about our own personal situations and personal experiences. Yeah. And that's one. And two is how we attack a certain subject but how we could look at it in three different ways and why it's three different ways because we have it in my case a married man with two children uh, angelo uh dating uh, uh, a lovely girl for a couple uh i think a year or two and and a single gentleman like claudio so it's it's amazing how we could look at the same situation differently if we're talking about how to deal with kids or whatever but how claudio is going to look at it as opposed to how i'm going to look at it so that's what i love about um the different aspects and how we could see and look at different uh subjects and I, and the hope of all this and i think from judging from the feedback that we've gotten is that a lot of people have said thank you for doing this thank you for being so brutally honest thank you for talking about your anxiety thank you uh, about talking about your dad's death uh in the case of me and angelo and how I, or uh, sorry in angelo's case of the grandfather and, and and me losing my mom at a young age and, and claudio losing his dad um brutally honest and um so all it all we want to hear is just one person saying, you know what guys thank you so much for um I feel better knowing that I'm not alone suffering from anxiety, suffering from, you know, we've discussed the uh, toxic masculinity and how to, to, to raise your boys. And, um, so that's what we, that's, that was our, our basis. And, uh, we're a little bit of hiatus also this summer, but we're going to start up again. And I love the guys. I love that they have their own fantastic shows, by the way, the Ange TV show and the dirty four, uh, just great guys. Honestly, the content is, is, is fantastic. It's entertaining. It's funny. It's, um, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, especially Ange, he's, he's going a lot of different ways in terms of the guests and you can learn so much from it. So I applaud these two guys They're, They, they hit it hard and they work hard like you. I, I second you on that. And yep. you know what? This deserves a drink. <laughs> yeah. 
Here's to you. Here's to Ange, Claudio, and all the podcasters out there. Reno, Rarico, this one's for you, okay? Cheers, you buddies. Mm. Luigi, tell us about your most <laughs> memorable experience on one of your podcasts, being the three men in a podcast, or agree to disagree. What was, what's your favorite show? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I loved, I loved my first show. Um, with um with 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 eric johnston um i loved so many guests oh my god i had the hilarious guest derek Seguin, andrew searles from la originally from montreal dan laxer ted bird but you know what i loved what i loved one of my most memorable one-liners or was said to me which i appreciated so much from dan laxer what a gentleman number one from cjed and we were talking on the show and I said, um, you know, but anyways, you know, thanks, Dan, you know, who am I? Uh, thanks for being on my show, something like that nature. And his response honestly changed my views and how I see uh, my show. And he says, hold on a second, Luigi. Whoa, 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 whoa. He says, don't say that again. He says, you are somebody. You're Luigi Costanza. You're the host of Agree to Disagree show. You have your own show. You've had the courage to do your own show. So you are somebody. So I will never forget that. I find that um, that 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 brought me to such another place, and I couldn't believe the 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 how amazing I felt with that. And another thing that I forgot to tell you was what Ted Burr told me off the air after we finished the show. This is coming from a man of what, Rob, uh, 30, 40 years on radio? 35 years of experience. 35 years of experience. He says, you know what, Luigi, I got to tell you, you're really good at this. Oh. I, I left my well, my mouth open. I couldn't. I said, Ted, a bigger gentleman than you um, it, it, it doesn't exist. doesn't exist. So uh, those two really uh, pushed me forward. Um I, you know, to be complimented by two guys that have been on radio for many, many years, uh, two Montreal well-known guys. Um, those, those are memories I, I'll never forget. They're the ones that, that kept me going. And I, and because you know what, as soon as you hear that from a Ted Bird, you say, shit, I'm doing, I'm doing something right. So maybe, you know, I'm not wasting my time and maybe I'm not so bad as I think I am. <laughs> you know? Well, he, he uh, Ted and Kim had said something similar to that, uh, after our show as well. Uh, when Patty and Jenny were on the meet and greet, we always have the meet and greet after mm -hmm. the show. It was something along those lines. And that what an honor from such seasoned, uh, talented, knowledgeable people to be telling you that. Because if they're telling you this, wow, you must be doing something right. But yep. I want to go back to Dan Laxer. I can remember when I was earning my living as a city bus driver and I was working on the evening shift. I would tune in to Anthony Holder on CJD. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the producer of the show, he used to like really, really, I mean, give him a big introduction. Daniel J. Laxer Esquire. I remember. <laughs> yeah. And also um, yesterday, uh, another great fellow from, um, from CJD as well, producing, I believe it was, um, I don't know if it was at, uh, Peter, Anthony, uh, Peter Anthony Holder, but Sheldon Twinkles Freed. Okay. And uh, he he was another one of the great producers on CJ. Yeah, yeah. Just just to say that these quality people over here coming onto our show and all that, it is such an honor. Yeah, it I is. I mean, you know, they have every reason, every excuse to find something else better to do. But you know, they're actually uh, they're coming on our show, and hey, they're helping us out. And hats off to you, folks. Just but for just sure. But think about it, Robert, because they could also look at it the other way, right? Because a lot of these guys from radio. And I'm not going to mention any other names. Could say, could say, you know, who the hell are you, Robert or Luigi? You, you get, you know, I, I studied, I studied media in school, and I've been on the radio for a hundred years. And here comes a, this, this, this new podcasting thing, uh, podcasting, and anybody but their grandmother could do podcasts. And uh, who do you think you are? And trust me, there's a lot of them that think that way. Trust me, they do. And, okay. and that's unfortunate because I'm going to tell you something. You know as much as I do and any podcaster out there, we each have our own ways of working. 
But uh, the Rob's Inner Circle show over here, it takes between two and three days to produce. Yeah. To actually get the whole thing together. You know, Just last night, we spent some time over the phone having a pre-interview. Yes. And what we do is we turn that into questions. It's a bit like Jeopardy. You give the answers first and you formulate the questions yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And then you got to do all the montage and all that, get everything ready, yeah. to create the event. You got to publicize it. There's a lot of work. Absolutely. And I'm sure that Absolutely. Those, those who do understand is because they have some sense of uh, reality with what really goes on with the podcast. And I'm sorry, no oh, no grammar that can just come on here or or anybody, mama, papa. I mean, it's open to everybody, you know, like, uh, why not? You know, everybody come do podcasting. But it isn't made for everybody. You know, it's the no. nerves. It's like uh, you're, you're constantly under scrutiny, and you know that, right? Yes, Whether you're you are. good or bad, good or bad, you're going to be criticized. So you have to be able to accept that. And every listen, time we come on the show, we're criticized. Absolutely. And listen, if you're going to do this and you can handle any types of, of, of criticizing, like I told you before, if I listened to all the naysayers from the beginning, I would have stopped after the first episode. And, you know, say, well, Luigi, why do you put yourself out there? Why are you doing this? Uh, uh, well, it's because I love to do it and I don't care what you think. Right. Because a lot of these people are, are, are dealing with their own uncertainties and their own insecurities that they don't have the courage to do it. Number one. Number two, if you don't adapt, you know, if we go back to the subject of of radio hosts or anything, you know, look at two great examples is Kodak and Blockbuster. They didn't want to adapt. And what happened to them? Bye bye. Right. They don't exist anymore. Exactly. So you're not going to stop technology. You're not going to stop the way people want to consume their social media and their and and podcasting has been the one of the not the one of the the biggest growing segments in media and social media for the past 10 to 15 years. So it's not going to stop, right? Obviously it hit up a spike during during COVID. But it, it's it's people are saying, oh, but now it's on the decline. No, it's not on the decline. It's on the decline because people are getting back to normal life. But it's going to still be pre-COVID numbers, and it's still going to keep growing. So um, that's the misconception. So you always have to constantly adapt in life, because right. if you don't constantly, if you don't adapt, then you end up like Kodak, or you end up like Blockbuster, irrelevant. Well, that's the whole thing. Uh, just an example of adaptation uh, on our show, Noon Hour Out of the Box. We have this segment that we have under Jenny's fun facts. And it's it's absolutely hilarious. You know, it's something new that was being brought onto the show, something original. And again, it all goes along with what you're saying, adaptation. Yep. And now this brings me on to the next question over here. Um, have you mentored anybody who was like thinking of becoming a podcaster or have you helped anybody in any way in influencing them or in which way has it happened if it has happened? Um, uh, not really. I've had, I've had a few people ask me, uh, in terms of their opinion, uh, in terms of software and hardware, what should I get? Uh, you know, you and I spoke a little bit before you started as well. Um, I've spoken with, 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 with Claudio and Ange too, um, in terms of the podcasting, right? Because live on Facebook and YouTube is one thing, but then there's podcasting, which is just the, the, the audio, um, uh, audio outlet through Spotify or iTunes or whatever, or anchor, which I use, uh, to, to release my podcasts. Uh, but no, not, not really. I've, I've had a few, a few friends that have asked me opinions, uh, but more focused on software and hardware, uh, less in terms of how to structure podcasts and what you should be talking about. Um, but I, I would love it. I would, you know, I still answer these questions and I still do, uh, but I, I'm still learning, right, Rob? Yeah, I'm, I'm still learning, you know. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. everybody's learning. Uh, do you think that uh, these podcasts are becoming somewhat of a threat to these radio stations out there? Because right now they're on the rise, like you're saying. And that's yes. one thing that's a known fact. Do you think they could be a threat to these radio stations somewhat? Because let's face it, look, you're at home in your basement. I'm here in my little studio. I got a green wall behind me. Yep. And uh, it, it costs what? Next to nothing to produce our show. And they have one of these radio stations, you know, there's a whole bunch of people behind their salaries and what have you. So do you think that the podcasting world is bringing some kind of an unseen threat to the radio business? It already has. Absolutely. Yes, it already has. Look at the cutbacks from Bell Media, from Rogers Media. 
Uh, it absolutely has. And that's just, you know, Canada, I could imagine in the States. Absolutely, yes. Because um, the, the, the medium of, of why I was always attached to podcasting is because people have changed the way they consume their, how they take their, their media. So if you want to work out, if you want to fold clothes, if you're driving in the car in traffic, you could put on any podcast, right? And you could put it on and pause it whenever you want. You can't do that on the radio, right? Exactly, exactly. You yeah, can't I do mean. that on the radio. So, uh, and also you choose to the, the the type of variety what you want, right? Is it comedy podcast? Exactly. Is it entertaining? Is it um, true crime? Is it educational? There's so much out there. And then to top it off, yes, they're feeling it because obviously radio, it's all about marketing dollars, right? That's how they make their money. The marketing dollars has shifted from here to here to podcasting. Why? Because the companies that are marketing, first of all, it's costing them less to market. Second of all, they could easily, much easier um, pinpoint their demographics of what they want. Let's say they really want to spend a lot of money. They know that the agree to disagree show there. And I know it. Most of my viewers are 35 to 50 years old, men, male. Then that's where they're gonna they're gonna put their money. So it's very easy for marketers and companies to justify their marketing dollars uh, compared to radio as opposed to to podcasting. Um, so yes, definitely they are feeling it. They have been feeling it, and they're gonna continue to feel it because you know you you can't look further. Look at you know Spotify with a hundred million dollars to Joe Rogan. Exactly. Could you imagine, imagine. how much wow. how much marketers are paying? How much wow. companies are paying just to put their name there? Wow. They have to somehow, you know, get that money back. So, um yes, very important Jenny to follow your analytics. So, um with radio it's very very difficult. So so many people have lost their job on radio, right? It's so many. But it is unfortunate. But we're seeing some of these people going into podcasting. Of course. Naturally, that's what they should do, of course. The people who lost the jobs in the radio, well, they go, you know what? If this is what, you know, caused my dismay over here, well, you know what? If you can't beat them, join them. Is that what they say? It's the same concept, Rob. You're still talking into a mic. And and, and, and even less, they, even more, they have more freedom. They could talk about whatever they want, you know? So uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, now that we're all waiting for some kind of money to come in and i'm sorry about the little things you're hearing this is the notifications on my apple computer which i cannot take out i'm no. sorry so no worries. there's a conversation going on uh, something to do with my job whatever sorry <laughs> for the disturbance <clears throat> so uh what was the train of thought again <laughs> uh we were just talking about um you know the radio guys going into podcasting and yes, they definitely should. I mean, it, yeah. it they, like you say, the investment is minimal. Um, and, you know, you could grow your audience so quick, especially if these guys that are known from the radio. Um, so it's all coming back to me right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime that we're awaiting these uh, sponsors that come in and what have you, some kind of uh, contribution coming in. Do you think the governments, both at the provincial and federal level, could be setting up some funding programs to help these podcasts grow. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going to put the, the politics. Well, listen, um, I, I I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening because, first of all, they're spending too much money on CBC, which is a dying horse. Um, that's number one. Number two, if you're looking at it on a provincial level, obviously we all know where provincial money goes. I'm not going to get into that because I, I don't feel like getting angry. Um, so, unfortunately, who always pays the price is the arts and making money or, or, or trying to um, support local um, local podcasters. I, I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening at all. Do you feel that there's a lot of the podcasts that are going on that are being – there's this plagiarism, there's – a lot of these podcasters come on and they're stealing ideas from other shows. Or do you think that what's the big deal? You know, do you take it that way? Because I know some of the podcasters actually get offended with that. 
But do you see that as more of a compliment? Do you see that as something to complement the whole growth of the industry? Uh, <laughs> I Listen, I, I, I'll be honest with you again. And you know, uh, I see it as a compliment because I find a lot of my guests were on other shows after they were initially on mine. And that's fine. Um, I, I don't mind it because I, I find that it's hard to copy my style. So it, it's almost impossible to copy other people. It's not like a comedian could copy it and steal a joke from another comedian, right? So it's very hard to replicate my conversation with a guest or the rapport that I have with a guest um, through another person. So no, I, I don't, I, me personally in this format, I don't take it badly. It's more of a, it's more of a, a, a compliment when I see people that were on my show initially that were technically unknown to the Montreal market. And then boom, I see them on another show. So for me, it's a compliment, but I think it's difficult to, to, you know, nobody could be Rob, right? Nobody could be Luigi exactly. in terms of how we, we structure our shows or how the conversations, conversations that we have, because I'll be honest with you, my show is very unstructured. We could go off on tangents and, but that's the way I want it. Right. That's the way, that's why I love it. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like structures. <laughs> when, when you said nobody can be Rob, you know what? I totally agree with you because nobody can give that introduction that I gave you tonight. That is so <laughs> effing true. And I, I hope I lived up to it. <laughs> you know, 51 minutes into the show. I hope I lived up to it. Um, <laughs> that was, that was way too flattering by the way. But, um, but you know, it's funny because, you know, Claudio and Angelo told me the same thing, and, and and they said, Angelo said, you know, you were kind of my 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 idol when you started the show when we started our Facebook live show with Tony Richo on uh, Nobody Is Safe Here podcast because technically we were, I would say, one of the first live shows podcast, whatever you want to call it. Actually, it was a podcast because I I did do it as a podcast as well, and I retrieved the audio from it in Montreal. Think about it. So when I think about it now and somebody tells me like, wow, I, you know, I, I kind of almost was like almost one of the pioneers in Montreal. So it's, it's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie to you. It is, it really, it is kind of cool. Hey, you know, this hour is flying by and yeah, before it's too late, <laughs> uh, you also have a passion for politics. So let's get into that a little bit. So talk to us a little bit about the passion you have for politics. Were you born with this or is this something you developed like out of the blue or is it something that you have in your blood? Um, so I studied politics at the university level. Um, I didn't finish my degree. I, I had finished a year and then my mom got sick with cancer. I left school and, and unfortunately never went back, but that's fine. That. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's, it's 20, uh, my God, 24 years ago. Oh. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Um, so 24, tw yes, 24, I'm 46. I was 22 when she passed. So, um, and I never went back to school, and that's fine. Um, but um, that passion for politics always stayed, and that's why when I did my first podcast, um, I decided to to be heavily uh, concentrated on political issues. But um, you'll see a lot. So a lot of my guests now with agree to disagree. It's a lot of having to do with political issues. And as I said, I've had uh, George uh, George Sinzatos, which is which was a bank bencher um, political strategist. Uh, Philomena Rotterati and MA with the Liberals, as I mentioned before. So, I've had some great uh people in, in, in politics, and um, I, I always I know you're gonna ask me that question, and yes, uh, I have considered going into politics, uh -huh. um, but I, I think um, it, it takes a lot in order to do that, and a lot of experience, and um. I think I would probably take a stab at it maybe in my f early fifties. Uh, cause right now my, my kids are too young and, um, and I have so much other things to do with my time. Uh, for me right now, my priority are my children and, you know, I coach baseball with them and watching them, uh, grow up, uh, is my priority. Sorry. I almost get choked, choked up there because my oh. boys mean the world to me. <clears throat> okay. Sure. Uh, I yeah. understand you. So, that. but, but yes, I love politics. I I'm very, very, you know, you could, if you go back in my library and look at my shows, I could be, um, I could get heated when we talk about political wow. issues. Oh yeah. And, I know that I've, I've seen that backstage. <laughs> yeah. It's just, 
you know, <laughs> Rob, it's just because I, I, I'm an eternal optimist. And I just, I want to see if in my lifetime, if it's possible to get a politician that could just make a decision for his constituents. Can we just really not look at the bullshit answer that every politician, the cookie cutter answer, everybody's fed up with that. So I just want to see whether or not somebody could come into politics as myself and say, I really want to make a change. I really do. But in order to make that change is I shouldn't have to feel any repercussions of if I vote on a bill that my party says I should vote for, but no, I got to vote with my, with my conscience, right? When you look at the statistics, what is it? 98% of party members vote for 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 um for the same bill in favor of you you mean to tell me you mean to tell me that almost 100 percent of people you and i will agree on every issue every law that we're trying to pass robert i find that hard to believe i know and, and that's what the problem is i think with the political system over here is it because it's intimidation because if they don't vote for that is it because they're going to be pushed aside? They're going to be the black sheep from the group? Absolutely. Is it, is it Well, that's it. So everybody, you know what? At the end of the day, this is human nature, right? So I guess maybe they feel intimidated or something. I don't know. You know? But well, listen, it's, it's, it goes, I go back again to my good friend and uh, liberal whip m &A. She's a whip. So you know what a whip is, Rob? No, so what here's is my... you know, I've been hearing a whip. Tell me what a, lip, uh, what, okay. a, a, what a whip is. So a party whip in politics is, in essence, that um, let's say I'm the party whip of the liberals and you're an m &A for the liberals too, okay, Rob? My job as the principal with a strap is that you told the company line you are in order you are behaving you're okay. not creating any problems for us when we're trying to, to pass a very controversial bill and make sure that you told that party line rob don't think about rob that you're going to go vote against this thing because i see uh, though you're you're on the fence there buddy but you know what that cabinet position that you have right now or you want to have might go down the drain if you if you shoot down this law but then again, uh, that's what a party whip does. Th there's always room because, you know, let's face it, just like car salesmen, mm -hmm. uh, there's good, honest politicians out there who mean well, who want to do well. And from what I'm, I gather, the way we, we were talking behind the scenes, there's a lot of things that you would instill in, in a political position. Let's give, give you, for example, let's say we would give you um, power. And you would be an elective official. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that you would do? And by the way, before we close up for show, well, sure. we're going to answer Michael's question here. But right now, Michael, we're on uh, we're on a different subject. We we don't want to break the rhythm. We're, we're going to yeah. get to you right after. So, Patty, please remind us. Put the question up uh, as just before we're closing, and that won't be too long. Uh, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, Rob is. I think politicians should be there to control the most important things in any uh, society. When I say important, I say economy, I say infrastructure, I say education and health. But all that is down the shitter, right? And, and when you look at it provincially. So th th somewhere there's a break in the communication where the left hand's not talking to the right, right? Yeah. Everybody's looking out yeah. for the... You know, you look at the beginning of COVID, what happened? Why did so many dead, why were so many old people dying in, in the, the long-term uh, facilities? How, how could that be? Why? Because it's very simple. First of all, the people working there were overworked and underpaid. Now, all of a sudden, because after there was this, this big revolt saying, how could you people walking out? What do you want? You're paying, and I know because I do their mortgages, okay? $12 right. an hour. $12 know, an hour for a preposé au beneficiaire, okay? No. $12 an hour, $13 an hour, $15. To the people that are taking care of our elderly, okay? The most important people that have, that have paid their taxes, that have built this province and country, and you're giving to give them somebody that's being paid freaking poverty rate poverty rate 
Robert. Yeah, you're shocked. Yes. What do you think he came out and now, oh, all of a sudden we're going to start paying Pere Posier Beneficier at $25 an hour because it was the better uproar because of how many deaths were at the beginning of COVID in the long-term facilities because they just walked away. Of course, you pay me $12, $13, $14 an hour and I'm stuck in, in, in a COVID-infested long-term uh, thing, understaffed. Of course, three quarters of them walked out. And I hear you a thousand percent because my new girlfriend is a preposy beneficiary. In English, that would mean a caregiver yes. in a, an old folks' home. And she does an eight-hour shift. She comes home absolutely burnt because it's burnt. so, so demanding. Uh, you know, the, some of these old people, you have to literally pick them up. You have to liter literally go to the gym to train because, you know, you have no more capability, no more uh, motricity. You have to pick them up. And uh, sometimes they're alone to do it. Yeah. Hey, you have to wait for the other one to come for the break. You don't have time. You got to buy 15 other people to take care of. I'll leave it at this, okay? This is my most one of my favorite things. You could tell the power of every great empire and every great country in the since the beginning of time of how they treat their elderly and how they treat their sick and how they treat their teachers and doctors. And I find we do a poor job of all of these in Quebec and Montreal and Canada. It's appalling. It's appalling. Is it? Uh, hello, Janet Ann who's tuning in, I believe from New York or is it Pennsylvania? Thanks for tuning in. I know she moved recently. Janet mm -hmm. Ann is, is uh, one of our followers on uh, Facebook awesome. over here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. Listen, you know what, buddy? Uh, we ran out of time over here. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, uh, Patty, can we get back to the question we had uh, from Michael Ankers? There you go. So Michael's got a question. Luigi, what tips do you have for interviewing? I have my own show and podcast. Luigi, the stage is yours. Rob, I hope you chime in on this after. But uh, honestly, Michael, the best advice I could give you is be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Um and and don't try to be too structured leave it open open ended questions let your guest talk let your guest talk and listen to your guest and above all don't interrupt your guest when they speak that's rule number 1 rule number 1 let them talk and listen to them because trust me you could listen 20% of the time uh, excuse me listen 80% of the time and talk 20% of the time that's my best advice and you know what? I second that 100%. You know, I couldn't have said it better myself. Luigi, this has been an hour that has been so much fun. It's gone by so fast. And wow, what an honor. We got you out of the mothballs. So we got you <laughs> back. So what are you going back with the podcasting? Uh, when can we hope to see you again? Um, on the air? Definitely uh, end of August, the beginning of September, for sure. I'll be back on. Are you going to be back for both shows? Because yes. uh, you, you got your audience for both shows. Yes, absolutely. Well, both shows. Yes, absolutely. And there's a grateful Michael Ankers uh, who's uh, thanks, thanks for Michael. The answer you've given. You're Michael, welcome. Tune in. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, follow uh, Luigi Costanza. His show. Agree to disagree. Uh, so, where is it that people can watch your your podcasts? Anywhere on YouTube at uh, Agree to Disagree, uh, Facebook page Agree to, uh, at Agree to Disagree Show, um, and uh, podcast, just media, uh, audio, actually, on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, anywhere that you get your uh, your uh, podcasts. So uh, as it is called, Agree to Disagree. At Agree to Disagree Show. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yep. that's all for the other uh, podcast. You got three men in a podcast. Same thing. Same thing. As it is identified. That's right. Luigi, I hope you stay, stay behind stage for that little meet and greet. It doesn't have to be long, but we have eager people who want to meet Montreal's premium superstar <laughs> in broadcasting. Can we count on you, Luigi? I'll stay a bit. I'll stay a bit. All ah, right. You know what? This deserves a drink. <laughs> Cheers, Here's buddy. to you, buddy. Thanks for Thank you so show, much. Right? Thank you, Rob. Thanks, everyone, for tuning mm. in. Appreciate it. So we'll get back to you in a few seconds, uh, Luigi. Stand by. Cheers. There you have it, folks. That was a local Montreal podcaster. He's also a mortgage, a mortgage broker. We didn't have a chance to get into that. He's a political enthusiast. We could have our own show just on that. He's so well-versed in politics. He's a, he's a great guy. It was a lot of fun tonight. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. And uh, next week, uh, we urge you to tune in. Same time, same place, same reason. And we'll be hosting Mr. Zach Phillips from... California, 
He's the director of professional developing development at NAM. He's also a songwriter and a singer and former editor at Music Inc. magazine. To each and every one of you, thank you so much for tuning in and for making this show so great. Thank you, Patty, for your job. Thank you, Jenny, for your job. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Ciao, everybody.